Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another horrible case with you. People say that bad things always happen to good people, and to a large extent this is true, because most cases in the world of crime are like that, and today's case is no different. Bangladesh's 18-year-old Sadiq was also a very good boy, honest, hard-working, but his honesty cost him his life. Sadiq's full name was Shibli Sadiq Hridoy, and he was only 18 years old. He was born in Chadagram city of Bangladesh, which is one of the world's oldest seaports with active natural harbors for centuries. Sadiq belonged to a very poor family where his father, Shafiq, was a truck driver and his mother, Nahid Akhtar, was a housewife. Also, let me tell you that Sadiq was their only child. Since childhood, Sadiq had a great passion for studying and he had big dreams for his life. So, to fulfill his dreams, he started working at a poultry farm at a very young age. Actually, whatever money his father earned was barely enough to cover their household expenses, so Sadiq started working at a poultry farm nearby to pay his college fees. Although Sadiq started working at a very young age, he quickly became proficient in his work. He was doing such a great job there at the poultry farm that the owner promoted him straight from a regular worker to a manager. Even after receiving this position, Sadiq showed no trace of arrogance. He continued to work diligently. By now, Sadiq had been working at the poultry farm for quite some time, during which he had managed to save some money for his college fees and had also made quite a few friends there. All his friends were older than him by five to six years, but they all respected Sadiq and worked under him because he was an educated and serious about his work. As a manager, he also made sure that others worked honestly while on duty. However, sometimes due to Sadiq's honesty, there would be conflicts with his own friends at the farm. Although these conflicts were not major and were usually resolved within the farm premises. Besides his work and studies, Sadiq had no other distractions. If he ever had any urgent work, he managed it well and always made it home on time before it got too dark. On the morning of August 28, 2023, just like any other day, Sadiq went to work, did his job, but that day he did not return home on time in the evening. Initially, his parents thought that Sadiq must have been assigned some important work at the poultry farm, but as time passed, their anxiety grew. Therefore, between 11.30 and 12 o'clock at night, his parents called him two or three times. However, Sadiq didn't pick up any of their calls, something that had never happened before. Although Sadiq didn't answer his parents' calls, they were still thinking positively. As the night passed while waiting, Sadiq still hadn't returned home. The next morning, Sadiq's parents tried calling their son once again, but Sadiq didn't answer this time either. Besides, they also tried calling the owner of the poultry farm, but his phone was also unreachable. Now, Sadiq's parents searched around their home and also asked people near the poultry farm about their son, but no one knew anything about Sadiq. Since they couldn't find any information about Sadiq from anywhere, they started to worry a lot. Amidst this worry, on the morning of the 29th, they receive a call from Sadiq's number. Seeing this, Sadiq's parents felt a little relieved. However, as soon as they answered the call, they felt like their son was quite panicked. After that, Sadiq told his mother, Some people have kidnapped me, and I've been inside a car for the last 12 hours. They're beating me a lot, and right now, I'm hiding and talking to you. In front of this, Sadiq didn't speak to his mother because his call got suddenly disconnected. Now after this, Sadiq's parents knew that their son had been kidnapped and he was in quite a bit of trouble and the kidnapper himself cut Sadiq's phone. Now, because Sadiq was the sole heir of his family, his parents were very worried about him. It was because of this tension that Sadiq's mother, Nahid Akhtar, started calling her son back again. But now, someone was cutting the call from the other end. After this, she was about to go to the police to file a complaint when she received another call from the same number, but this time it wasn't Sadiq, but a stranger speaking. The boy on the other end said, Your son Sadiq is in our custody, and if you want his safety, don't call back. After this, the kidnappers said, 
If you want your son back alive, arrange 1.5 million taka quickly. The details of when and where to deliver the money will be given on the next call. Before proceeding further, let me tell you that taka is the currency of Bangladesh. Now, as I told you, Sadiq's family was very poor. They didn't even have one lakh taka. But because it was a matter of their only son's life, they started gathering money, and for the next three days, they put all their efforts into collecting money. They asked for money from their relatives and neighbors. But from the 28th to the 31st, they couldn't even gather two lakh taka, let alone 1.5 million taka in these three days. So on August 31st, 2023, the kidnappers called Sadiq's parents again and demanded money. But here, Sadiq's parents directly said to the kidnappers that we couldn't gather so much money. After hearing Sadiq's parents' words, the kidnappers also compromised with them and said, Bring us two lakh taka quickly, then we will release Sadiq. However, kidnappers don't usually do such things, but seeing this situation, it felt as if the kidnapper already knew about the financial condition of Sadiq's family. However, the kidnappers had already reduced the ransom amount to two lakhs, but even then, Sadiq's parents told the kidnappers that two lakh taka is also too much for their family. In response, the kidnappers said, Okay, but if you don't give us the full amount, then we will kill Sadiq. After hearing this, Sadiq's parents said, Don't harm our son. We need a four-day extension to gather two lakh taka. Now, Sadiq's parents also borrowed money from shopkeepers to gather the remaining amount. Some people understood their compulsion and gave them money, but some couldn't. However, after wandering everywhere, they managed to gather two lakh Bangladeshi taka within three days, and now they were just waiting for the kidnapper's call. On September 4th afternoon, the kidnappers called and summoned Sadiq's father near the Banderban district headquarters with money. Besides, they threatened again that if he disclosed anything to the police, Sadiq wouldn't alive. Now, since Sadiq's parents wanted to save their son, they didn't take any risks and went straight to the location indicated by the kidnappers, paying them the ransom. There, Sadiq's father waited for a while, then two kidnappers arrived, their faces covered, only their eyes visible. They didn't talk much to Sadiq's father and just took the money from him. However, as the kidnappers were leaving, they assured Sadiq's father that his son would reach home before him. Hearing this, Sadiq's father was immensely relieved and hurried home. But upon reaching, he found Sadiq hadn't arrived yet. He asked his wife about their son's whereabouts, and upon hearing this, Nahida became anxious. Subsequently, Sadiq's father shared everything with his wife. After hearing the whole story, Sadiq's mother became even more anxious, yet both of them waited outside their home's door until evening, hoping for Sadiq's return. By now, the night had fallen, and they hadn't received any further information about Sadiq. Similarly, this night passed, and by then, Sadiq's parents had lost all hope, and their condition had deteriorated to tears. Up until now, even Sadiq's relatives had learned about his disappearance, and one of those relatives advised MD Shafiq to lodge a complaint with the police. Initially, Sadiq's father was also afraid, because the kidnappers had warned him that if he tried to tell the police anything, they would harm Sadiq. But then on September 7th, Sadiq's father called his son's phone, although the kidnappers had forbidden it, but there was no response. By August 28th to September 7th, Sadiq had been missing for more than 10 days. Now, things were getting quite difficult, so on the evening of September 7th, Sadiq's parents decided to go to the local police station. There, they recounted everything that had happened over the past 10 days to the police. Initially, upon hearing all this, the police were quite angry with Sadiq's parents for not informing them of the incident first. But when Sadiq's parents mentioned the threat given by the kidnappers, the police understood what a parent must be going through at such a tough time. After that, the police quickly assembled a team to search for Sadiq and began their search. During the investigation, the police first checked Sadiq's background, such as his behavior in college, his friends, and how he lived with his family. During the investigation, it was revealed that Sadiq was a good boy, 
who neither had enmity with anyone nor did he engage in fights with anyone. However, during the police investigation, Sadiq's mother, Nahid Akhtar, remembered something. Friends, before moving forward in the video, I have a small request for you. I want to let you know that behind the David True Crime channel, there is a team of five people who work hard to bring you the best quality content through thorough research. Currently, our team is entirely dependent on the YouTube Partner Program, but due to low subscribers on our channel, we are not receiving any financial support from YouTube. Therefore, we are unable to cover the expenses of video production. Without financial support, we won't be able to continue working for long. If you appreciate our efforts, you can support us according to your preference by visiting the link provided in the description. Your small support will motivate us to work effectively on the channel. Thank you. Now, let's continue with the story. Actually, once Sadiq had told his mother about a fight he had with his friends inside the poultry farm. Now, upon hearing this, the police began searching for those boys who had fought with Sadiq. Without wasting any time, the police went straight to Poultry Farm, and upon reaching there, the police apprehended the six workers who were working there. Afterwards, each of them is interrogated one by one. In the initial investigation, these people tried to prove themselves innocent, but in the end, when the police pressured them, four out of the six boys confessed to their crime. The names of these four boys were Umong Ching Marma, Sui Ching Mung Marma, Ang Thui Mung Marma, and Ukyathawai Marma. The police arrested these four on charges of kidnapping, and still no one knew about the other two people. During investigation, the police asked all of them about Sadiq's location, but none of them uttered a single word. However, after being kept in jail and tortured for quite some time, they opened their mouths and also revealed about their other two accomplices. On September 11th, they began to recount how on the night of August 28th, when Sadiq was returning home, they kidnapped him to take revenge. Their plan was to kidnap Sadiq, beat him, and then demand money from his parents in exchange for releasing him. Initially, everything was going according to plan, and these people were going to get the money. However, during this time, Sadiq saw the faces of two of them, which made them think that Sadiq now knew everything. Therefore, they thought that if they let Sadiq go, he would inform the police and they would be caught. So after that, they used a knife to attack Sadiq and attack him repeatedly from his face to his feet with that knife. As a result, Sadiq bled a lot and died on the spot. By now, the police and Sadiq's family had learned that Sadiq was no longer alive. Now, the police are investigating this case as a murder case. After that, the police asked these people about Sadiq's body to which his killers replied that after killing Sadiq, they had cut his body into pieces and thrown it on a hill. After that, the police went with these people to that hill, and after going a little up, they actually found some body parts there. But among those pieces, the police found a proper body only a little far away, but its face was completely disfigured. The face of that body was so badly disfigured that the police couldn't identify whether it was Sadiq or someone else. However, after looking at the clothes on that body, its height, and some surrounding things, Sadiq's family confirmed that yes, this was indeed their son. Now the police had arrested all of them on murder charges, and during custody, Umong Ching Marma made several revelations in the Shibli Sadiq murder case. He stated that he had a good friendship with Sadiq, but two months ago, they had a disagreement over some issues. After that, Umong Ching decided to take revenge on Sadiq. Additionally, he mentioned in his statement that he himself had killed Sadiq with his own hands and even ate small pieces of his body afterward. This was a horrifying and shameful act, but as soon as this news appeared in the media, protests started across the country. During this time, people couldn't tolerate their anger and when the police were taking all these accused on the evening of September 11th, the crowd snatched Umong Ching from the police and beat him so severely that he died on the spot. Before the court could sentence him, people themselves gave him the punishment for his deeds. 
Moreover, the police managed to remove all the other accused with great difficulty and put them behind bars. Since then, there have been no updates on this case. If any new update comes in this case, I will inform you through a community post on my channel. However, Sadiq's parents lost a son who loved them dearly and was very serious about his future. So with this, the Shibli Sadiq Ridoy murder case comes to a close here. If you appreciate our efforts, like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Thank you.